Two other things you should recall about thermal physics is how objects expand when they're heated. So you could see a copper rod at room temperature and the same copper rod after it's been heated to a higher temperature. And the important thing to realize is that the amount of expansion, delta L, is dependent upon the original length of the copper, the expansion coefficient of copper, and the change in temperature of the copper. The change in temperature can be measured in Celsius, and length can be measured in any units as long as delta L is in the same units. Okay, in addition to expansion, you should also know about the conduction of heat. And heat will transfer from the hot surface to a cold surface through some intermediate material. What happens is the atoms in the intermediate material, the ones close to the hot end, will be bumped by the atoms in the hot. They'll gain some energy. They'll collide with the molecules next to them and transfer some energy. This energy will continue to transfer through the material until eventually the energy winds up in the cold. This will continue until both objects reach the same temperature, and that is known as thermal equilibrium. The rate at which the heat transfers depends upon the type of material, that's K, the conductivity of it, the cross-sectional area, that is the area of the uh, material that you're passing through, and the difference in temperature between the hot and the cold. It also depends on L in an inverse proportion, that is the farther the heat has to travel, the slower the rate of transfer. Q over T is a rate of transfer and it's measured in watts, joules per second.